Matt, Sorry, I... before you start, look, uh, <laughs> just before you start, because you're the... I left RT 15 months ago, and this is the first representative from RT that I have met. So I needed three things, three things. Money. <coughs> first of all, <laughs> the last official... One of the last official phone calls I got from RT was to return a Sunday game umbrella. So <laughs> would you please tell them it's broken, right? OK. <laughs> Secondly, I'm still getting a lot of letters from the finance department about my tax affairs. Please tell them I left the gig 16 months ago. OK. And thirdly, the day I retired from the Sunday game, which is a beautiful occasion, and RT Sport, a Sunday game, gave me a beautiful presentation of a signed autographed jersey of the Dublin team. I was absolutely thrilled. Were you really, though, the Dubs? No, I actually was, because I, I admired them a lot. But there's one slight problem. They never sent it on to me, so I've never <laughs> got it. So if you're out the back someday, in, yeah. in, in the wardrobes or in the warehouses, and you see that, would you just stick a stamp on it and send it to Pat Spillane, Kelly? I, I will look for Thank that. You. I will look Thanks. for that when I'm hunting through the flip-flops. Message so. delivered. Um, I don't need flip-flops because I was with Joe Brawley for 30 years <laughs> and, and Joe did more flip-flops than any <laughs> RT commercial <laughs> department. So there we are. Very good. Right. <laughs> so, so, look, that's the stuff that you needed to get out. I need to just say one oh. thing. I just needed to say one thing to you that... The first ever All-Ireland final, Pat, was 1986. I was 15 years of age. Me and my brother John sat on the top deck of the Cusick stand, edging down towards the hill end. We saw you score one of the greatest goals in, I would say, any All-Ireland final. Keep it going. was an unbelievable performance. We all went home that night to Dundrum County Down and we wanted to be Pat Spillane. You went home to Kerry and you were Pat Spillane. And <laughs> can I just say, whenever I was sitting in that stand, never in my life would I have dreamt that I would have shaken your hand, Thank let you, alone talk to you. So Thank it's a you. massive honour. That's very it's nice. It's a massive honour. That's very nice. <clears throat> it's a massive nice. honour. That's very nice. And, and that game, that game was probably, I would say, one of your, one of your best finals. Uh, do you know, like, you prepare, I played in 10 All-Ireland Finals, and you prepare, you prepare the same for all of them, and you're ready for all of them, and some days, if you had ducks, they drowned, and some days, it works. 1980, I, I, I was told I'd never again play football in 1981 or 82. You did the cruciate. I did my it cruciate. It was an injury nobody came back from yes, back and then. At the, no, and at the, I came back, and everything after that, 84, I won an All-Ireland, 85, I won an All-Ireland, and 1986 against Tyrone, I, had, I was privileged and lucky that I had my best ever game with Kerry in an All-Aden final. And, you know, after winning that, it was my eighth All-Aden medal, and we thought, Jesus, we're going to keep going. But, unfortunately, that was the last time Kerry won an All-Aden until for 11 years after that. And there was one time, you know, people talk about sport and about matches and about moments, and that goal was a case in point. And you talk about sports stars and you talk about games which are decided in the moment... And in the moment is something that you can't coach or you can't prepare for. Well, you couldn't coach that goal, that and, was for sure. And that goal, I dived for the ball, I dived at the ball and decided to flick it to the goalie's left. I never did it before, I never did it since. Why did I do it on that particular occasion in such a vital time? I have no idea, but anyway, the goal went in, we won and... It was a nice memory. It was a nice memory, and it was also a big year for you because you also met your wife that year. Yeah, do you know, uh, it doesn't... <laughs> oh, Jesus, no, that, 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 that didn't sound that, right. That, right. That's, that, that's, not, that's not the pause we need on that. Can Pat. you ask me that again? We can, don't worry, we let it that out. Right. So, yes, I yeah. met my wife that year. <laughs> uh, and, and, do you know, uh, OK, I'll give you a little, two little things. One, I, I met my wife that year. We got married. I haven't the ring, but it's a year or two after. And I never won. This is the message. And, you know, uh, GA and sport is data-driven now. It's all about stats and it's data-driven. I never won another all Ireland medal after I got married. And there's yeah. a message there. <laughs> Seriously, uh, all those stats guys and those data guys and those teams, married guys, waste of time because they're not focused. I was focused on football. That year, I won two all Ireland's. I won an all Aden by beating Tyrone, and I won an all Aden by meeting my wife, Rosalie. Oh, good save. Uh, here. Yeah. 
you were, good recovery. You, you were five down there going into injury time. Good you recovery. just bagged a couple of goals. <laughs> uh, uh, your wife, Rosari, she's with us here tonight. There she is. Uh, uh, so, Rosari, is, is this all true? Did it all, did it all go downhill when he met you or when Larry Tompkins started to play for Cork? <laughs> I'd say when he met me, I'd say, yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. Is he still as, as romantic as he was back then? Well, he, he gave me that medal, yeah. He got it made into a oh, bracelet. Oh, he did. This, was the, this yeah. is the, the bracelet that he got made from his... 1986 medal, yeah. Yeah. So that was the last medal you won? And the last of the great romantics in oh, Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <That was> me. <laughs> yes. The, um... It was. It, it was. And I got... Jesus, probably it was Rosario's suggestion now. And really, like, <laughs> because I'm the most useless romantic in the world. I bought her a, a, a birthday present three years in a row that was the same piece of jewellery, so I'm not... <laughs> so, and, uh, and, you know, like, Rosario... Uh, Rosario sang... Uh, the, way I, the day I met Rosario was in 1986. She came into our bar in Templeno, Spillane's Bar, and she sang Follow Me, John Denver. That was 1986, and... 37 la years later, I'm still following her. I'm delighted. <laughs> I'm in the good books. I'm You're in books. the good books. Speaking of... Uh, speaking of good books, this is the new one, In the Blood. Uh, there's football in it, there's family in it. There's two women that feature prominently, Rosari and, and your mother, you speak a lot about in the book. There's a lot of women that feature prominently. And, you know, I spent 30 years working in the Sunday game. And one of the things that pissed me off was that the Sunday game was defining me as a person. And, uh, and in the Sunday game, you spoke for an average four hours live on air. And people decided, you're this, you're a bollocks, you're this, and, and whatever. <laughs> uh, and... Like, I just didn't want the Sunday game to define me. I'm not Pat Spillane, the outspoken critic on the Sunday game. I'm Pat Spillane, the family man. And there's a lot of that. In, and I wanted this. to write a book to show who was Pat Spillane, what is Pat Spillane. And on the, late, on the Sunday game, my last outing, when Kerry beat Galway, for two minutes I did something. And you know, with television, you rehearse and you have sound bites and you do your notes and you're ready to rock. And suddenly, something happened after Kerry beat Galway. I started crying. And I started crying for several reasons, because 1964, my father was a selector when Kerry were beaten by Galway. And 60, Kerry Galway finals resonated to me. I lost my father, he died. Uh, and, and you were only eight I was eight that... years of age. And secondly, I taught a family, because two of my nephews had just won all Adam medals. Thirdly, I taught at Temple Noor, where I came from, because two other lads had won all Adam Middles. I taught at Kerry, where I played, and I taught at Crow Park. And in those two minutes, all the strands of my life came together. And I said, when I write this book, wrote this book, I said, I want to say who the real Pat Spillane is. A family man, a community man, a, a fellow who loves his family, loves Temple Noor, loves Kerry. And you're right. I mean, uh, do you know, I, t I, I looked at your story. Pat and your history, Patrick, and your history. Like, my father died when I was eight years of age. Uh, my mother was left with four children, widowed, no widow's pension, no nothing at all. Had to run a bar, raise a family. But, you know, I looked at you and I said, I swear to God, I was saying, there's so many similarities between me and Patrick Keelty. I wish, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you don't have my good looks. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but, but the one thing that struck out was that you lost your father tragically in 1988. But I was sort of saying to myself, he was sort of lucky, because in 1987, you won an all Ireland medal with Down. And for a father and a mother, for a son to be on, in Crow Park winning an all Ireland medal. That's the ultimate. And the one thing that really upset me over the years is that my father never saw me or Tommy or Mike win 19 all Ireland senior football medals. We missed that. And, and, and I, see, I see so many similarities. But my mother took over and my mother was, ah, oh, Jesus, like, she was a rock. Irish mothers are great. And I couldn't sing enough praises about my mother. Uh, she parked her life. She ran a bar and she genuinely never took a day off in 20 years. She, she parked her life to rear her four kids. Uh, when we were playing with Kerry, she never saw us playing football. Never in the flesh saw she us playing. She never came. 
never came to... And the only thing, like, we, we never sat together for dinner, only for Christmas Day, because otherwise we were working in the bar. We were up and down at the grocery shop to the bar, and we'd never talk football. And the only thing she'd say, we'd, and I played in 10 All-Ireland and Finals, and the lads played in eight and seven and whatever like that. And the only... We never talk football. And my mother, it'd go to the door... We got holy water. If, if, if it was possible to be drowned by holy water, uh, we should have been drowned by holy water because everything was holy water. And to this day, it's still my habit. But all she'd say to us, and she wouldn't say, I hope he wins Sunday. All she'd say to us is, remember who you are. Just keep us grounded. And she was a lovely woman. She was just, she was just a great... She wasn't, she wasn't emotional. She didn't do emotions. She didn't cry. She didn't do hugs. But my mother, and I suppose everyone, a lot of you here have mothers like that. She had the look. <laughs> Do you know the Irish mother's look? And you don't need any answering because my mother's look was a black card, a yellow card and a red card, <laughs> all in the look. But anyway, she was a great lady. Um, she's, you know, she comes, you know, shining through in this book. Um, I said this about Patsy. One thing when I write the book, I said, this is not the book Pat Spillane, you'd say, ah, fucking, he's a lunatic, he's a loose cannon, and he's going to talk shite and whatever like that. This is the exact opposite type of book than you expect from Pat Spillane because it's about family. I, I said, the one thing I wanted to do, and if it is possible, I didn't want to insult any single person, and I think I have achieved it. You have. And if you found somebody that's insulted... <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, before... Before we let you go, a uh, couple of football questions for you. Uh, David Clifford, the greatest that ever played the game, you think? He's heading that way. He's heading that way. He's a genius and a good young lad and whatever like that. If you want to ask me, do, can I just... Because I, we're going to ask me about the state of Gaelic football because I wanted to get this off my chest. Well, to be honest with you, we've got one minute. So, All right, so, quickly so... after the state of Gaelic football. Uh, Gaelic one football. I was, a I was a teacher. A uh, geography teacher, metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rock was something which was originally one type of rock and is now a completely different type of rock. I think right? you might have started too early on right. this story. Right. <laughs> Secondly, Gaelic football is now the metamorphic rock of sport. It was originally a catch and kick, uh, a man to man contest, and now it's become hand passing, 451 on average a year, kick passing, uncontested, and high catches, average six. Ga the game uh, of Gaelic football, uh, all you hear on the sideline is uh, recycle. Reset. It's like you're looking at a washing machine because there's two buttons on a washing machine that say recycle, reset. So, so, finally, just to get it off my chest, the modern day game of Gaelic football with too much hand passing, too much defensive, is a game of shite. And, <laughs> and if you want to quote me on that, if you want to write that down, it's a capital S. Folks. He does exactly what he says in the TED. It's a brilliant book. Go fetch it. Thank you so much, Pat Spillane. Thank Pleasure. you so, so much. Pleasure. There we go, one more time. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Pat's new book, In the Blood, is out now. Pat will be signing books in Eason's and O'Connell Street tomorrow morning at 11.30, and he probably will be finished by 11.30 on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs>